Uh, just for a little moment, just for a little moment. Like I said yesterday, abona temombe sale makabo. Ay, etabo ratamina. Every day keeps getting better. Every day, every day, every day get e banata mi Santa balata manta makabatali atamon kabo sakabo right. Lamin tali baata karias. Baramon sabo. Fete dila tantali kapakuri. Sibonami nankambolai. Anga baka tati patanita pata mata makabo. Lai tabaka patali takapata mata minata kambe. Kambe 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 kambe. Kambe makari akabanate kabarate kaskapalia. Afatari safatani lava kambrokotone. Amen. Bless it, bless it. <laughs> so that we don't lose the meeting. Uh, don't worry, tomorrow we will pray. Ah, there's six hours tomorrow. From 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's, there's no market, nothing, 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 nothing. So, so we we'll not lose the salmon. We'll, so, we have created a room. All the prayer we have been skipping since, the, since these 40 days, I've been saying there's no time. There is a teaching meeting. The, don't worry. Tomorrow morning from 8 a.m. I just pray I have grace. Maybe I will take like three or four hours before I run away. Because I have two engagements tomorrow on the island. Don't worry, we'll pray tomorrow. 8 a.m. From 8 a.m. Brother, eh? from 8 a.m. Nothing will stop you. I see that you like prayer, so I like you. Don't worry. <laughs> Let's pray before we teach. A great king, we ask that by your spirit, you teach us today. Unravel your scriptures and make us blessed even by your word. Make the simple amongst us wise and I, your servant, grant me your trance in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 8 began yesterday speaking about circumcision but as much as we try to bring the teaching to an end it seemed like the Holy Ghost wanted to steal the show and we had to give him the right of way he took control and we had to pray so we continue the teachings on circumcision today ah uh, Many there be amongst us that have found a way to live life with our baggages, with our infirmities, with all form of encumbrances, all form of things that are not accepted in the promised land, all form of things that are not accepted in the horizon of our destiny. If at all we be crossed to the next phase of life and destiny, there's a measure of skin that must be shed off. There's a measure of the first skin that must be cut off. And it doesn't happen cheaply. It happens by a process called circumcision. Every time circumcision was achieved in the Bible, you hear scripture emphasize that what was used was a sharp knife. A sharp threshing instrument. Not one that is blunt, one that is potent enough to, to inflict pain to the end that first skin is taken away. Excess skin, excess flesh is cut off. For also transition at times, circumcision has to take place. For transitions to happen in destiny, in phases of life, circumcision has to take place. There's a level of self, flesh, that was accepted in the former state of destiny that won't be accepted in the next phase of life. I found out that as we grow in God, the things that the mortal realm accounts to us as sin becomes more. The path that used to be wide becomes more narrow. Yes, I discovered in my, on my path of spiritual progress. 
that what used to be why the part that used to be why becomes more narrow and it is even so in the natural realm if you're a child of six months six months slaps you if a baby of six months slap you even you you will carry the baby's hand and slap yourself like this right but if a, if a child of six years slap you you will carry the tides and and say what happened was that it was the same action but the realm of interaction has now changed before now the child was six months but now the child is six years we expect him to know better so there were things that we accepted in the former window of your life that won't be accepted in the next window of life so for you to enter the next phase of life and destiny you have to you have to slim down when i mean slim down i don't mean wait in the natural i mean you have to shed off some things shed off some shed off some excesses and that's why season after season the lord begins to bring to us matters of circumcision saying to us that we need to be circumcised the knife needs to come into our co- into our company and it, it begins to cut isaiah chapter 9 verses 8 in the book of isaiah chapter 9 verses 8 the bible said he sent his word unto jacob and he lighted upon israel who did he send the word to jacob upon whom did the word become manifest israel there was a journey from Jacob to Israel. It was not a journey in time. It was a journey in circumcision. It's something had to happen to Jacob for him to become Israel. Before now, the man Jacob was known to be a supplanter. He was a very corny person. Corny. Very corny. The best way to describe Jacob, in my opinion, I know it sounds funny, in my opinion, people from him be say, they are, they are traced. They are traced. Their lineage is not far from Jacob. They are corny. Ah! I mean, I've, I've, it was for me to say it. <laughs> you, you, you can't be for me to say You're not corny. <laughs> you be say, people are. <laughs> Very corny. As corny as a serpent. That was who Jacob was. It was so corny that it can take your destiny from you. And even you, you will not be aware that he has swapped destiny with you. It will take, it will take your glory and even the mortal realm will not do anything because it, is, it was by your hand you brought it to him. Nobody could teach Jacob successfully. Everybody that Jacob met and tried to teach Jacob. Jacob, in, in the, at, the, at the end of the day, cheated them. When Laban was proving wise, Jacob teach Laban back to back, both sides. The, the meaning of the name Jacob means supplanter. And for him to come into the covenant, he has to drop that part of him. That it's an excess that won't follow him into destiny. It's an excess that won't follow him into the next phase of life. So for him to switch into the man that was captured in destiny, circumcision had to happen to him and it had to happen to him in a hard way it happened to me on, in one night it happened as a reason of wrestling he wrestled with an immortal entity I don't know what kind of wrestling was that though, that happened all night I don't know <laughs> and I don't know if that was even a wrestling at all because when the angel was ready to leave and Gabriel was still willing to wrestle the Bible said the angel touched the whole of his thigh and he became dislocated. A man that can touch your tie and not blow your tie, touch, and your tie becomes dislocated. Do you wrestle with that kind of man? There was no wrestling. I don't, I don't think there was a wrestling. I, what I think was that there was a bargain from night to morning. Eh? You can't wrestle with that kind of entity. An entity that, an entity that can just touch your tie. It might be say he didn't eat, he didn't smite. Bible uses words with intentionality. Bible didn't say he smote the tie. Bible said he touched the tie, the whole law of Jacob's tie, and it was dislocated. It was from that day that Jacob began to lean on his staff. His confidence was broken. From that day, he began to lean on something else other than his confidence. That was when he was able to become Israel. His tie was first of all broken. You know, yesterday we, we built the emphasis of circumcision and confidence for, 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 for God to
to help you. He has to break your confidence. He has to break every form of alliance you have to self. Because at the point of fall, the first thing man saw was self. The moment we ate the fruit, our eyes was open and we saw, say, Ay, self. So for every time God wants to help you, for every time God wants to, wants to bring you into another economy of relationship with him, one of the things he does to you is that he reads your self, flesh, inclination to the fallen nature. He damages your confidence, breaks your hope in self. Shatters every belief and alignment you have to the fallen nature. For Jacob, what was at stake was destiny. Destiny was at stake as long as he was still Jacob. Destiny was at stake as long as he, as long as he, as he was still the man who was a supplanter. For destiny to come into reality, Jacob had to become Israel. And he had, he had to happen by circumcision. A painful thing. The Bible said they, they broke his tie. They broke his confidence. I'm saying that, Emmanuel. There are certain levels of when you, when you are ready to enter destiny, that's when you will see certain areas of your life that the great one is not happy with. You will now ask yourself, all along, you've never spoken about this part. All along, all along. For me, like I was explaining yesterday, one of the strongest arm of destiny, one of the strongest problems with me was that my confidence was always anchored on men, men, men. So yeah, it made men fail me many times. And he, he knew that if I move with this kind of mentality, it will do one of the greatest damage to my destiny. So he had to make me learn it on time. Every time I build my confidence on man, that very man strikes me down. Every time I put my hope in a man, that very man backstabs me. And I had to learn it in several ways and several means. Now I don't, I don't, I, my, I don't believe in men again. At my hope is not in men. Because the arm of flesh has been cursed. Said cursed be the arm of flesh. Say those that trust in the arm of flesh, they shall fail. But still, still, just still. So the word was given to Jacob. Upon whom did the word become manifest? Israel. I'm saying to you that, John, the things that God said to you about your destiny, no matter how you pray. Certain realities will not come to reality until you go through the knife. You must come under the knife and you must begin to get rid of certain area of flesh, certain area of self, certain inclination to the fallen nature. I know you don't believe me. Let's try Exodus. Let's try Exodus. You will see it in the book of Exodus. Ah. Exodus chapter 4. The book of Exodus chapter 4. It's a book where Moses was being given the tools of ministry. If you read, if you see from Exodus chapter 4, from verses 1 or 2 there about, you see that Moses was given a thing called a rod. It was his rod, but his rod became the rod of God. He was being given the tools of ministry. Things to do ministry with, such as power. All those kind of things. And when, he, when he even began to interrogate the God of heaven and say, what will I tell Pharaoh when I go there? He said, this, and this, is, this, this is what I will do. I will kill Pharaoh's first son. I will do this. I will do this. So he was telling Moses about the power that is at his disposal. And you would think that is all that was necessary for ministry. You would think that was all that Moses needed to do ministry. Suddenly, it felt as if a veil was taken away from the eyes of the Most High. A veil was not taken away. It was that having given you the tools of ministry, you can't continue with something. There's a part of you that can't continue. There's an uncircumcised aspect of your life that can't continue. For you to be my man, circumcision has to happen to you. For you to be my man, you must go through the blade and must cut off excesses. Cut off every form of inclination to the fallen nature. Suddenly, in, the, in verses 22 of that chapter, you see that. It looks as if the God that was happy with Moses all along, he suddenly became angry. Ah, it, it, was, it, it is to tell you that it's okay as long as you are still here. The moment your Jacob wants to translate into Israel, the, the moment you want to move from this point A to point B, which is destiny, you have to go under the blade. After God spoke to Moses, gave him the tools of ministry, his rod became a powerful rod. He gave him power and all of those things. The Bible said Moses took his journey and wanted to go. 
in verses 22 the Bible said and God met Moses in the inn and almost killed Moses God almost killed Moses on the account of circumcision there was an aspect of Moses' life that wasn't circumcised which was his son his son was not circumcised read no 24 sorry 24 and it came to pass by the way of the inn the, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him then Zipporah ah, ah, ah oh God Zipporah Zipporah is Moses' wife Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son you, I, I would like you to see what Zipporah took she took stone the, those kind of stones are what are called flint stones sometimes when I make reference to the man the patriarch Apostle Arame, I call him a flint stone you know why I call him a flint stone because his assignment in the body of Christ is to, is to cut, circumcise the heart of men, inflict pain to the body, whether or not they want it. Because as a body, we won't cascade into the next phase of destiny, into the next phase of our, of our destiny as a corporate body, except that we are circumcised. Separation has to happen in the body. Like Joshua, certain persons have to stand and say that we are for God, and you, you are not for God. Certain persons in the body of Christ are like flint stones. They are not even knives. They are ancient tools of circumcision. They are not modernized tools. The modernized tools are the ones that are called knives. The ancient ones are flints. They are stones. Stones. It is more easy if it is a knife. With a stone, you, have to, you, have, you, don't, you don't just have to cut. You have to eat it. With a knife, you just have to slice. With stone, you have to eat it. Eat it until it cuts. Zipporah didn't take a knife. She took a, a stone a sharp stone and she circumcised her son if you read continually the bible said she took the first skin and threw it on her husband and said a bloody husband had thou for Moses to enter this the, a, no, it, it look, the, my problem was the God was silent from verses 1 or chapter 4 he was silent about this matter he kept on giving Moses his tools of destiny. He gave him a rod, gave him power, gave him insight as to what he will do to Pharaoh. He said, he said Pharaoh, is, Pharaoh is holding my first son. I will kill Pharaoh's first son. Those were the conversations on along. Then Moses carried his bag and then he wanted to enter. He wanted to enter destiny. I will say, God now met. The God that was speaking since now met. He said, I will kill you. Uh -uh. Oh God, what did we do? You are trying to enter destiny uncircumcised. No, no, no. You have to come under the knife. The knife has to go through you. There are areas, the aspect of your life that can't follow you into this next phase. I'm saying this to say to us that for us to enter the next phase of our destiny, the aspect of our life that the God will begin to shine, that God will begin to shine his touch upon. And if you can hear the whispers of God, you must be willing to submit your life. There are areas of your life that I won't permit you to continue with. Some of you, you are proud. You are too proud. His knife you have to come and cut. He will cut. If he knows that your call is important, he will almost kill you to he will almost kill you to, to perform circumcision. The same way the call of Moses was important. He almost killed Moses to make sure that Moses did not go on assignment with an aspect of his life being uncircumcised. Do you know the problem of Moses? Moses had now Moses. He's, he's an Israelite by birth. By training, he's an Egyptian. But then, when Moses left Egypt, he married an Eden. Zipporah. Zipporah is not of the stock of the household of Israel. Zipporah is an Eden. Zipporah's father is. What's this man? What's this man's name? Hey, help me. Jethro. Thank you. Jethro is not a believer. Jethro is not of the household of Israel. So the, the, the one that God wants to use to deliver Israel had in his custody the practice of the Eden faith. Because it was not consistent with the, with the people of Israel not to, to be uncircumcised. Are you with me? It was not consistent with them. But now Moses had now fraternized with the Eden so much that even his own son the one that will stand as the deliverer from the, for the entire clan of Israel 
as a son that is not circumcised is fraternity with, with the world that now make him become a, a different kind of person i'm saying this to say to you that some of you picked up behavioral pattern picked up habits picked up natures some of you it is it, it, it some of you it, you, it is as a reason of the, the tribe where you came from somebody is so stingy and he say he, he says because he's, he's from ijebu does the mother care so stingy he says he's from ijebu huh do you know what is wrong with it? There's a principality in their territory. And the principality makes men stingy. He has not bowed to that principality. In case you don't know where I came from, I came from, I'm an Obama. And I'm not the, the new kind of Obama. I'm, a, I'm the ancient kind of Obama. If you meet an average Obama, he's so full of himself. Proud. I'm telling you facts. An average Obama man is so full of himself, proud. They are highly egoistic. Ah. If you think I'm like, I can list certain Obama man that you people know. You will, not, you will know what we talk about. Fela is on our side. Eh? Wale Shoyoka is, 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 is my kinsman. He bears my name. My name, our son name. He's our kinsman. I mean, I, how many of you know Wale Shoyoka very well? You know he's a tough man. He doesn't bow to anybody. Even president, nobody doesn't care. Like that's how we are. They are full of ego. We are too full of ourselves. An average bad man. Oh God, that shit. See, an average man will gather all his money to send his student to school, not because he loves education. It looks as if he loves education. No, we want to be perceived as better than everybody around. My daddy gathered his money, sent us to one of the best schools, not because you know, oh, his problem. If you if you come, if you look at us from afar, you think. And bad people like school. No. They, they want to come out and say they are better than everybody. That they have a doctorate degree and you have a doctorate degree. That's just... It's, it's, he, he, he tried with my senior sister. He said he wants her to be doctor. She couldn't. Then he, he met me. I said, I can't... Come back, Kuta. When we were in Badon, I sat Daniel down and I was asking him, I said, this is your medicine thing. How is it? Then he began to tell me, he began to tell me, and my sister was there. I said, so this is what daddy wanted us to be. To be dying to read book. <laughs> daddy wanted us to almost die. That's, the, that's, the, that's where me I came from. Full of self. Full, very full of self. Eh? That's how we are in our place, unbending. I can count many men that many men that are from my place. Many men from my place. Some if you put a gun to their head, if it has, if it has, if it is at the expense of their ego, shoot them. They don't care. Full as highly egocentric, egoistic. Even my father, with tongues on his sleep, was like that. Ah, no, no, no. He moves around believing in himself. That he believes so much. He He believes in himself. He does not. Oh God. We are always full of self. Imagine me not taking confidence in the fact that where I came from, they are egoistic. I have, see, I have failed. For me to enter destiny, the, 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 the knife had to come. And many times, he placed my help in the hands of people that I would never want to bow to. An average man will never bow to you. He does not care. He does not care. Does not care. That's how we are. But me, he, 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 in, my, in my trainings of destiny, he puts my help in the hands of men that I will never like, men that I will never want to bow to. I have no choice than to bow. Moses' problem was that he had, he had fraternized now with the eating. And now an ideology has stuck in his heart. Contrary to what the ideology of the God that he serves is. How, how can you take Moses as a son and the son of Moses is not circumcised? And it is the same you that they want to send as the deliverer of Israel. God had to obstruct him on the road. Almost wanted to kill him. Bringing death to the path of Moses. Because circumcision was not totally done in his household. Listen to me. 
there are, there are some of us that we we have fried ourselves in certain wrong character traits. It's now time to drop it. You you say you're from Ondo, that Ondo, Lagidi. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. You are not of the stock of an Ondo person. The eh? Bible said our civilization is Zion. I'm not saying you should change your nationality. That, no. I'm not saying you should change your hometown. I'm not saying where they ask you where you're from, you say you're from Zion. That's a lie. Many times people come and they confess nonsense. Say where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Zion. Oh, God, calm down. I'm from Iperu. Don't say <laughs> you're not from me. You're not from Zion. You're not from me. When Bible said your civilization, your civilization is of Zion, it does, it's not saying that you should change your nationality. It's not saying you should change your hometown. It's saying your ideology, your perspective about life. How you think around life should not be derived from the earth. It should be derived from Zion. You should be civilized by Zion. Oriented by Zion. Educated only by Zion. That's what Bible means when Bible said our civilization is of Zion. It does not say that you not come and say that ah, no, I'm not from Eba again. I'm not from Abekuta again. No, that, nah, um. <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying. He's speaking about a change in orientation, change in perspective, change in ideology, change in education. That you educate, you, you, you are educated not by your word but by Zion. Zion determines what you think, how you think, how you direct your thoughts, the things that are your thinking process. It is Zion that educates you to say that even if, even if a person offends you, if the great one demands that you, that you want to apologize, you match to the person and apologize. The education of Zion is, is totally different from this world. It is Zion education that, ah, come on, see, Banantemo. It is Zion education that, that, that makes us understand that according to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, it is not given unto a man that walks to other step. So even to the smallest and most minute details of your life, you are not designed to be wise to know what to do. You ask God every time. I know some of you went to school because you wanted to go to school. And I mean go to school because I mean you chose schools, universities, because that was the one available. That's an error in the past. Now that you are now now that your civilization is of Zion, you should no longer make decisions of your own volition. Your decisions should be drawn from Zion. It is Zion opinion that matters. That's what the Bible means when the Bible says that our civilization is of Zion. Now somebody saying this is a stubborn man because he's a mundo. Who cares? Our civilization henceforth is not of this earth. Is that is from Zion. Our orientation, our perspective about life. They ask a minister that why is this so much about my money? He say, he say, he say, he say, I'm an evil man. Oh God, we is an aberration. He say because you're an evil man, that's why you're always about money as a pastor. Who, who told you that? We can search through the length and breadth of the eastern region of Nigeria. We can pick ministers that are pure, pure, un, 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 uncompromising around the matters of mammon. And yet you give excuse that the reason why you compromised on the grounds of mammon is that you're an evil man. Ah. It's a shame to Zion. When we speak, this is what it means. When God begins to deal with you, begins to kill every inclination to the fallen nature, all your confidence is in yourself. All the, every alignment of flesh begins to damage it. You can't journey from here into the next phase of destiny carrying this bag, this bag of infirmity, bag of iniquity bag of reproach the very one that the God of heaven wants to carry and make him the leader of the Israel company he had an infirmity looking around him his son was uncircumcised he had fraternized now with the Eden his opinion about life is similar to that of the Eden God was trying to draw Israel out of the land of the Eden the one that he wants to use to draw them out this very one he wants to use to draw them out had an ideology that was in alignment with that of the Eden the great one had to come and say I will kill you, I will kill you there are some of you that your destiny is so important, God will almost kill you to achieve circumcision. Because there are areas of your life that will never permit for you to carry it into destiny. Somebody met me yesterday and he was telling me many things. And every time I asked God, God said, there's something I want him to learn in this thing I'm teaching, in this thing I'm showing him. If he can learn it, 
and become the very, the very thing I want him to become, the suffering will be, will be over. So if every time you talk, I say, I say, oh God, oh God, sorrow. There's something God wants you to learn. Learn it and become what God wants you to become. It's me that think our cry, our tears changes the heart of God. John, no. If you don't learn what God wants you to learn, you will keep going to the heartbreak and heart pain until you learn it and you become, you start becoming what God wants you to become. We are, we are, we are so much of an emotional generation that we speak about mental health as if the God of heaven is worried about our mental health. He almost does not care. Some of you, your destiny is so important that God will not allow you to enter destiny with, with all this kind of nonsense behavior. Some people are very jealous. Very jealous. And where God will plant them? God will plant them in a place where they have to accommodate a thousand people. Yet, blocking within them is jealousy. God will deal with them and deal with them and deal with them and deal with them. They will suffer heartbreak, suffer pain, suffer pain. They think the solution to pain is cry after they cry, they watch Netflix and they try to make new friends. They are, they are not wise. You, you, are, you are trying to make new friends because you are depressed. No! Try to find out what is the God of heaven trying to make me learn in this situation. What exactly does he want me to learn? You are trying to make new friends. Those new friends, they will stab your heart. There will, there will be tools in the hand of God to make you learn. Until you come to the point of learning and you learn and you become the very thing you want to become. Everything you try to change, everything you try to adapt will be a tool in God to deal with you. You don't just know it. Because some of you, he is not ready to change his mind. Two years I've counted, it doesn't matter with him. You are weeping, you are depressed, you have lost weight, the mortal one does not care. I've seen it many times. I found that very early in life. Very, very early. Very early. That God does not change his mind. See, when God brings a spiritual dealing around your life, he's not willing to change it no matter how you cry. He's not willing to change it no matter how you mourn. No matter how depressed you become, he's not willing. If you are too depressed and you want to die, he can restrain for like two months. After two months, you come again. We, we bull out. I say, well, yeah, now you have to learn. It, 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 that's why it is called sharp threshing instruments, sharp stones, sharp knives. Because if they leave you alone, are you them? If they leave you alone, you won't change. If he says stop, you won't stop. So for you to stop, he has to pierce you. He has to come to a painful means. For God, for God to end immorality in the life of David. God had to come with a sharp knife, a sword. And Bible said the sword forever stayed in the house of David, forever. Stay with me. I don't, I don't, I, what, why are you moving around? He, he, David was, was a bank, a bank, a bank of immorality. Guess what? God had to bring a sword into David's house. And the sword God brought, he brought it through his son Absalom. Absalom dealt with David, chased David out of the palace, seeking to kill his father. Absalom did just end there. Absalom slept with one of David's wife in the public, messed his father. From that day, David, there was no story about David's immorality again. Bible said, a time came when David, <laughs> David was lying down on the bed. And they, they smuggled a damsel. <laughs> Oropa used to call them Santana Leda. Have you seen ourselves in Santana later? Oh God, come on, skateboard. You know, we have prayed too much. We are, we are, there's nobody with Santana later asking here. Ah, my friend, <laughs> my, my friend, sometimes if you are walking on the road, you will just stop me and say, okay, wait. Say, why God don't give me this kind of game? Why? I offend God. <laughs> see, 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 did, did I offend him? So that you can just be on Instagram. You just, you just come say, why won't come? Why won't come? Say, Kilo Day, why? Why? You say, you say, that even if there's no light, your wife's skin will be shining. No oh, mama Tomai. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Back we said they took a, 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 a young lady. Her blood was, was still warm. They smuggled down that David's blanket. 
and put on overnight. The Bible says, Oh, till morning, David did not touch her. The, the David we know, David, <laughs> or God David, <laughs> people say, Till morning, shh, you know, thought, he's not him. They have, they, are, they have circumcised him. They took, they brought a knife into his house and the knife stayed, cut him, battered him, butted him. God, God wanted to achieve, or God wanted to kill immorality in his life. Some of us, <laughs> if we have to come the hard way. I was explaining to you guys yesterday that <laughs> there was, there, oh God, show me mess. There was a pastor. For God to achieve circumcision, they, they are, he, he had to be exposed in the public. As if that was not enough, they took him to court. On a Sunday morning, they carry placard to his church. From that day, it, it, it is not just that we didn't hear any story of him around women. Even his dressing change. He used to wear Gucci. He used to as, he wear Fendi with sneakers. A man in his 40s wearing sneakers and Fendi. So, you know, it's not about frowning. It's not about, no, Jesus, no. And Carla wants it. And Carla at his suit. He, he look at all oh, those. <laughs> You know, sometimes we reduce ministry to nonsense. We are trying to have a record of the most, of, we are trying to have the record that they call us the best dressing pastor, the most fashion pastor, all those, all those. Ah, God. We, 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 we lose perspective in the middle of the game. Forgot to save him. See, is that to happen? They carry placard. You know, you know what's placard? Pro, they, they came to protest in front of his church, protest. Not on weekday, on Sunday. Even his, even the, even his members and leaders were mocked. For God to achieve circumcision, He can do it through many ways, through many ways, many ways, many ways. He has, he has many sides of sharp knife. At that you see what any one different one. Okay, there are many tools. No, ma- no, ma- Emmanuel, no matter how thick your foreskin is, there's a, there's a sharp tool enough to cut you. Because for Jacob to become Israel, something has to happen. There has to be a kind of fight, a kind of war, a, something painful must happen to him. His confidence was broken and from that day, a full man started limping, started resting on something. It was a sign. So that every man that will come into the fullness of his destiny we have to lose his confidence and from today he will begin to bend on something his hope and confidence his reliance will be on something other than himself what's on you, you, you might not see it when he begins to shine his thoughts quickly release it ah, I found out early, that I don't love something too much if you love it God will come for it I discover, I discover, I discover, I discover, I discover. So a sister had to ask me that what does she have found out in her work, God? That if she's not moving anywhere, there's no problem. The moment she chooses right, that God will say, Now I want you to go left. See, she said, Why? That everything was fine. And she said, Now I want to go left. Because she said, Ah, no, it's right, I want you to go. Then I told her, I said, locking within us is the seed of rebellion. Everything within us always want to rebel against God. That even on natural, even on natural grounds, our choices and our desires are, are, are in rebellion. On neutral grounds, the things we call our choices, the things we call our desires are a product of rebellion. That even when you make the most natural decision, is it, that if you look at it very well from the lens of heaven, it's a rebellion. Because there's a seed of rebellion in every man. Except that God begins to work in him. He begins to bring this, this axe saw. Sometimes you have to come with axe saw. It's not nice of that axe saw and cut you, pieces you, damage you, destroy you, and gather you whole again. Every man that God will use greatly is a man that God must circumcise. Brother, there are things within you that can't travel with you to the promised land. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There are things in you, Naza. They can't follow you to the promised land. You can't, you can't cascade into the next phase of destiny and life with these things. 
the great one must come with his sword. He must come with his knife and begin to cut. And begin to cut. Begin to cut off. He, must, he will begin to cut off. And you will see, I am a Siba. I'm 49. A man can do paratenesi padilata. Jesus, Anna, mama, mama. What? This tongue I just spoke now. God just told me about somebody. I know the person. I won't say it. Ah. See, mm, you won't cascade it to the nexus of life and destiny with this infirmity. And the God of heaven is willing to wait at that point. The point of transition is always hard. That's why it's always hard. There's something in you that can't transit into the next phase. I know many of you in life and even in destiny, you've been in point of transition and it looks as if it's always the hardest part of life. It's like that because there's an, there's, there's, an, there's an aspect of your life. There's a part of you that can't follow you. You have to drop it. At this point, at this, at this juncture, you can't continue with this one. Their character traits, behavioral pattern, desires, appetites. Desires and appetites. They can't turn into the next phase. You have to drop them. And it's not always easy. He, 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 he begins to undo them with a knife. Cut them. Cut them. Cut the foreskin. Cut the foreskin. Cut the f Let me show you a part of scripture. Ah, Joshua. Joshua. Ah, Marua Sena. Joshua chapter Jesus every now. Ah, Joshua chapter 5. <sighs> this is why. Your journey into the next phase of life and destiny looks longer than it should be. John, he has been trying to deal with you on a certain matter. But yet that matter has not ended. You have mastered a way of how to mourn and cry and fall into depression. Yet with that infirmity, you mourn, you cry, but yet you still carry that baggage. As if what he's trying to achieve is to make you mourn and cry. No. If there were other means with which you can end this affliction in your life, end this baggage, take away this inclination to the fallen nature without bringing you to tears, he would have done it. But there's no other way. So he has to come through the hard means and the hard way only. When he begins to come through the hard way and the hard means, huh? listen. Many people become they, they now become more aware about the pain and they try to they forget what God is trying to achieve. They are more conscious about the pain in the season and they forget what God is trying to achieve. That's why I said to you many times, even in your pain, there's a school there, there's a class, even in your pain. Learn what God is trying to make you learn. Don't just say this season is hard. What is God trying to make you learn? Or else you will repeat that season of hardness. You will recycle that class of, of struggle. That you have to recycle it every time and every time you recycle it because what the great one is trying to achieve is, is not done yet you are only conscious of the pain you are not conscious of what is trying to make you learn in your senses of pain have you I mean, when things become so 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 funny i see that i say what are you teaching me what is the knowledge captured in this class that i am now what is it what is it what is that that i'm not finding out what is that that I'm not finding out? Then he begins to tell me. He said, locking within you, locking within you. is still pride, 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 pride. Huh? Huh? Guess what? I have to submit. Every time he says pride, I submit. Pride, I submit. Sometimes he says, he say, anger, anger. You are an angry man. I say, I come off a thin man. Tell her, help me, help me, help me. Sometimes I get angry and because of my anger, I lose things very important to me. Ah, some of you, you go angry and your anger, you lose things very, very important to you. And you sit down and you say, you don't care. God will bring another window. You have lost a window and the only window. And the great one will have to teach you a lesson by saying you have to come back in humility to get the door that, that, that opened to you. That's what I mean. I, I, sometimes eh, when I get angry, I sit down and I think again. Because I, I don't like coming back to beg. <laughs> uh, when we came here and we were having issues with certain persons, I told you that I said, 
I said, I have power. Not even spiritual power. I'm saying I have power. I, 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 when I say I have power, military power, I can lock people up. There are military personnel that are at my back and call. I was just talking with Dominic today. I said, I need soldiers. He said, when? Which time? Where? Yeah. I said, Dominic. I, told, I said, Dominic, I need soldiers. He said, all right, sir. When? I said, I'm not to tell them. Say, oh, okay, I need soldier cap. Soldier cap. <laughs> power is shocking that boy. He's looking for where to use power. He's looking. So, I, I was telling him, I said, I, said I, it, will, it won't cost me 30000 and the barracks they will put him is not anyone close by. That his family can come and beg. Go and go look for barracks in Shagam. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah. I will tell the military officer that we are not carrying him on the ground of discipline. No. We are carrying him on the ground of criminal acts. Uh, you, you, many, of, many of you are too, you are, so, you are so much of civilians. So you don't know anything. Have you heard of someone that sold a car before? Eh? Have you heard? Someone is owing me money. So, my friend told me that this guy, we don't hear his story. If they owe people money, their money they go. So I called him. I said, Alpha, Oga. I said, Alpha, my money. He said, Ah, Pastor. I said, See, calm down. He said, I go lock you up. And I know they, I know they use police lock people up. I lock you up. One seventy-four with four battalion. Oh, don't go your barracks. Say, I say, I say, I beg, I beg. I say, you just have the place. Say, no, I, I don't go there twice. <laughs> say, he say, I know the name of the officer where they the guard room. I, he, he called the guy's name. He said, I don't go there twice. I know the experience. I beg you. I go find your money for you. And he looked for my money for me. <laughs> you have not given my money complete. I say, I, I, would tell, I said, you be like you go sleep guard room by tomorrow. You say, Pastor Afan, now why they use so that they threaten me? I said, I know they threaten me and they tell you facts. I go lock you up. Some of you don't know. People are good children. Eh? You know what it means for soldiers to carry somebody on the account of criminal acts? If it's discipline, eh? If it's discipline, they can give you grass to cut, you can cut grass. If they say they carry on the account of <laughs> criminal, I've told you that before. They can tell only you to be pushing a more tank, a more tank. As you know, the way they will tell you to push a more tank from this point to this point. If you don't push it, they will beat past that. Tomorrow you come and push again. I, I, I have military mind. And there were persons giving us issues when we came in. So I was, I was raging. I was raging within myself. I picked my phone, called the military personnel that is close by to me. I said, I need to pick someone up tomorrow. He said, Roger, sir. When? That, he just said, he didn't stop. He just said, Roger, sir. When? I said, I. He said, I'll give you feedback tomorrow. So when I sat back, I asked myself. <laughs> I said, now what you can't do for you. If the first way that you know you say, you they cut, you they so that they cut people. You don't write your name as a troublemaker. And I've, I know over time that there's always a repercussion for, for actions taken in anger. I know. That's why many times, even when I'm angry, I sit back and ask myself, is it worth your anger? It, it, I, I, it's not because I'm so much of a smart thinker. They have dealt, the, the God of heaven has dealt with me very well. That I get anger. I say, ah! Get out! All of you, fireball, all of you. And that night, you come and say that. <laughs> oh, Kana, man. <laughs> oh, it might not even talk. It might just be maybe in the midnight. And I struggle to wake up. Farana, Farana, Paradi. And as much as I pray, my prayer will be bouncing back. <laughs> Look as if I can't enter in the rain. I can't crack the rain. And I say, wow. I say, ah, angry, man. <laughs> so, no, I'm not angry. 
Then he will not talk. He will just replay the thing for me like a video. Replay it. I say, ah, ah, sorry, sorry. He say, no, it's not me. You tell sorry. You go and tell them sorry. Ah. Guess what? I won't answer. I will do as if I didn't I did, I did hear. So I will continue to try to pray, to move in prayer. If I, even if I use two hours, the prayer will keep bouncing back. And the problem is that some of those times I have administration the next day. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, they're not born where you beg. Because you need God to come. If, if you are like me, I, I don't believe in going for meetings, ministering, and God does not show up. I don't. Uh, he, he, you, you just know that if I can't enter into his habitation in this my prayer, what is my assurance that tomorrow when I say, Come now, Holy Ghost, he will come? Yes, what I will say, okay, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. So I'll take out my phone. So I'll just drop a text. I'm sorry for that noise. If they wake up in the morning, they will see it. Even that little act for me is, is, is breaking, is, they break me in total. That's why you don't see me get angry now. It's not like I don't know how to. But the pleasure of anger, I, I, I think, now nah, it, me, it makes me think about the percussion. It, it took me four days, four days. I was on that matter. Say, should I pick this guy? Should I not? Some days I, I woke up with anger. I said, ah, I'll pick this guy up today. I will pick. The, today, today, no go past today. After some moment, I asked myself that. This thing you want to do. What is the repercussion? You buy my answer real quick. Taba follow up back with our. Ah, the liar Jore Mo. Which is to say that if man you have a problem and I use police to carry you, there's nothing that can make us friends again. You might not be able to do me anything again because you're afraid that I, because you're afraid that I have police. But you will never greet me. Even if I greet you, you won't answer. I see that many times think about it, it's not like I'm so reasonable. They've brought me under the knife many times, and the knife have butter me, made me go back to say no verse when I don't like to say no verse. But so when you begin to walk with God, people will offend you, and God will tell you to go and apologize. They will, they will speak bad about you and you, you say, don't say anything in return. Ah, that's the other part. It's not hard for you. For me, it's hard. You know why? I can talk. There's an anointing in my tongue to talk. <laughs> I can't. Hey! You, you people think when God gave the anointing, he say he, 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 he limited only to preach. No. He gave the anointing. He now give you a choice to use it to preach or not to preach. I can't talk. As soon as I, even if this chair is blue like this. You can't, you can't win an argument. I'll tell you it's black. If you, if you try to argue, I will enter sciences to say that there's, a, there's an aspect of this thing that is black. It's just that it's reflecting blue under this light. You, 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 can't, you can't win me. <laughs> I'll tell that light changes color. It's just, oh God. They know they win me for argument. Even if it's for argument, no. I can talk. I... There's nothing you want to say. I have a response for you. There's nothing. Me. There's nothing you want to say. There's always a response. There's always a response. There were times that my, me and my friends we've been playing, we've been joking, and these they were trying to ban ourselves. And they thought they could talk. If they have to say that ah, you're bad mouth too much. It's not bad mouth. There's an anointing for it. It's, it's me that will say that I will only use to preach. Oh. Only preach. So when you talk, when you talk bad about me, eh? some some people are so skilled that they talk bad about people with microphone. There was one day we were in Bariga, and somebody picked the microphone and he spoke spoke. And it was clear that it was me who was talking about, and I was talking like this. I was smiling. Ah, everybody knew that trouble don't happen today. That <laughs> you have you have unlocked the beast. They know that ah, walk borrow, walk borrow, walk borrow. 
The, the people just knew. They just, they, 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 they just, they were just come to meet me. I beg, no, I say, ah. See, they say, I beg. I say, no, 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 don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Don't say, they say, car. Ah, ah. I say, I'm not going to use much time. Just 10 minutes. <laughs> ah, Baba Sina Kabwe. There's all trans. There's all trans that can use to send someone to depression. He gave it. You you that you choose. That's what. That's one of these why it will grow or it will not grow. If you use it for the wrong reason, it will not grow. If you keep using it for the right reason, it will grow. They say no. I say please. I'm, I'm, just just ten minutes. They say no. Please we ah. They don't. I know the person was talking. You know they say when you talk, you would think that there's no response for what you are saying. That you have the last say. Say all this what go young guys miss ah. Just talking, say talking prayer, 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 diminishing the grace of God. What what do you have? What is it? Now, you know, before that time, I administered and I, I, and I ministered on spiritual labor. So I was trying to diminish diminish diminish, diminish spiritual labor to emphasize the grace of God. You can't do it without me inside. But it brought me inside. So I said, just step. If, if I use more than 10 minutes, collect this mic. I'm sure I will not even use me. I will not even use up to 10 minutes. Everybody knew that. They say, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. One of, he, one of the biggest, hardest things God did to me was what He did to me, I think, last two years, thereabouts. I came to me and he said, in this season, don't fight. Some of you are aware. That I said, in this season, don't fight. John, it's not hard for someone like you. For me, it's hard. Because I have, I have strength in that region. I have strength in that area. I'm not saying fiscal fighting. I know what he's talking about. He's saying that if someone preaches against you, don't, 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 don't sleep there like that. Because I, can, I will preach a good sermon. Everybody will be blessed, but you know it's you I'm talking to. Every, I'm, I, see, get, oh God, this is a skill like that. Everybody will be blessed. They will write they are not to be full, but me and you know it's you. It looks as if the grass will, will open and swallow you. So he told me, this is a don't fight. I said, I said, I beg, I beg, I beg. To not make matters worse, in that sense, there was a man of God that was fighting against me. With the fact, it was verbal fight too. Even on his status, he was striking at me, striking at me. And my friend is a bad person. Every time the guy in his crusade said that they talk to you, he was crusade say, oh, oh, that they talk to you, call us. <laughs> my friend just was crusade, he said, ah, this guy won't kill you. Open my status, he said, they talk to you. Ah. So I told him, I said, go and say I should not fight in this season. Say, ah. you want no. You could not cook up someone for your status. Everybody could write yes, sir, yes, sir. But no, there's someone that owns it. It's not there. <laughs> he told me this is it. Don't fight. And that was one of the hardest things for me. You, you, I may not even remember what, what I said God told me. He said, if you want to be great in this season, don't fight. And I, I struggled with that instruction, but I held on to it. It was in that season many, many things began to happen around my life. See, many of you are, many of you are boasting about your character traits. Saying, this is how I am, young man. If you are going to bear the king's errand, there are many things you have to drop. If you are going to bear the king's message, there are many things you have to drop. You can't look like the people you are sent to deliver. You have to look like a different person entirely. Is sending you to deliver people from something and you are looking like the things that is holding them captive. There are many character traits you have to drop. Many things. Many things. Many things. Many things. The same you that is supposed to stand as a preacher of righteousness, you are locking, you are locking in all form of iniquity. Brother, brother, you have to drop it. He has given you power. Power can be a deception, like I said yesterday night. In the face of actual destiny, power can be a deception. You have to come and say, take me through the knife. 
every inclination to the fallen nature every form of flesh that has gathered within me has to come down now cut me off rid me of every form of foreskin brothers and sisters the foreskin has to come down the foreskin has to come down over bloated overgrown flesh enough of you crying to say saying oh i'm tired or oh, god don't say you're tired ask him what are you trying to teach me with this pain what is the very thing you're trying to make me understand what is that thing you're trying to kill within me because i i know many times our pains are got tools to keep things in us i know it you are just there crying 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 trying to make new friends jumping from pillar to post there's something he wants to kill in you find out what he wants to kill in you find out what's that thing He's taking you through a process of circumcision because the days ahead are the days of the new. Ah, I speak prophetically to someone just now. The days ahead are the days of the new. They are days of the new. The new. And you won't enter the new with the old. The old has to be taken away. You come into the new with freshness. First skin has to be taken away. And you enter with a kind of newness, a kind of wholeness. You can't enter into the covenant. You can't enter into the covenant with, with all form of iniquity, advertisement of falling nature. Let's do Joshua chapter 5. I've not done that scripture. Then we'll pray and close. And it came to pass when all the kings of Amorites which were on the sides of Jordan westward and the kings of the Canaanites which were by the sea ere the Lord had dried up the water from Jordan waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel which were past that their heart melted neither was spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel <laughs> and at that time the Lord said unto Joshua make the sharp knife circumcise again the children of Israel the second time and Joshua made sharp knife and circumcised the children of Israel as the eel of the ah! look at what they call that place the eel of the first king <clears throat> that, that place that's where all flesh are dropped the first king are, you you can't pass that place with the first skin. You have to drop them. He calls it the eel of the first skin. For you to cross over at this, this point, the bit of day, you can't continue. Guess what? The Bible told us in verses 1 that the nations even were scared of Israel. They were afraid of Israel. But Israel that they were afraid of, they had issues with their God. Everybody can see you as a powerful man. Everybody can see you as a great man. Everybody can see you as a wow, what a man. But yet there's an issue between you and God. Your relationship with God has to go beyond the public. It is intimate. We one between you and him. Only you and him knows what is wrong. Let everybody be clapping. We say, great man, great man, great man, great man. You know that you're a fallen man. You have to go and say, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall save me from myself? Scripture said the nations, they were afraid of Israel. Their hearts melted. Their spirits left them because Israel was coming. They said that was coming. They had first skin. God said, you, you can't continue like this. Everyone amongst you have to be circumcised. Everyone amongst you have, have, to, you have to come under the knife. The sword has to come to you. Peace. Do you, maybe the reason why you are not entering the next phase of destiny and life is that there's an aspect of your life that can't enter that way. You have to drop it. Maybe the reason why you are not entering the next phase of destiny is that there's an aspect of your life that God has been shouting upon for the past two years. That you are still carrying. You are still carrying. Tonight you have to say, what is that thing? Don't let me escape. Don't let me escape. Take your knife from me. Cut me. Cut me. <laughs> As mama sila. Don't let me. Don't let me. Don't let me escape. Don't let me escape. Don't let me escape. Don't let me escape. Cut me. Cut me. And let your surgery upon me be successful. 
Amen. Let your surgery upon me be successful. Perhaps there's something you've been screaming about that my sensitivity can't be. Don't speak again. Come now with the knife and cut me. Because ahead of me is the new gate. Ahead of me is the new territory. Ahead of me is the new ground I want to enter without restriction. I want to enter without barrier. Cut me. Cut me. Cut me. Cut me. Let there be nothing left in me standing as an obstacle to bring me into my inheritance. Before Israel was the promised land, but their first king was an obstacle. Before Israel was the promised land, but the first king was an obstacle. God said to Joshua, you can't continue like this. You have to take away the first king. We have come to the heel of the first king tonight. And every man must be willing to drop their first king. It's painful, but you must say, cut me. Cut me, cut me, cut me, cut me, cut me. Show me no pity. Anna mama salama. Sebo bebe. Seleme kelema. Anselo broko bulele. Sali mame. Saile boele kamo. There's a sister, the Lord says, who said to you that you won't spread the prayer. You told them that let my tears not stop you the day you are working on me. And now he's working, yet you are crying. He won't answer until he finishes. Can you cry and say, Don't let my tears stop you? I can't cry, but don't stop working. Finish your work, perfect it. So long I enter the promise, so long I enter destiny, so long I enter covenant. God, God, God. Let the 
destiny waits, brother. The other side waits. That promised land waits. But tonight we have come to the mountain of the first king. We have come to the hill of the first king. Where Joshua and the entire Israel we have to be circumcised. No man will march forward except they are circumcised. Every one of our company must become circumcised. Every one of our company must take the knife. Every one of our company must come under the blade circumcisers. Let no man escape. 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 Let nothing of me escape. A papa time. If nothing and not a more. Let nothing of me escape. Let nothing. Let nothing. Let nothing. Let nothing. Let nothing of me escape. Let nothing of me escape. Cut me. Cut me. Cut me. Cut me deep. Lord, 
Latamanti Barai, Fretanagatelina Patale, Panta 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 Aya, 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 aya. Mekadiska. Oh, Lord Jesus, born. Asabrata namata madaka. Sevatani tapata manta broskoto. Infrakata naita bata. Sanctify me. Sanctify me by thy word. For thy word is ever true. Sanctify me, the Bible said. Isa. Borotele poliandu lolo. The Bible said he shall sit on the house of Levi as a purifying fire, as a sanctifying fire, as a purifying fire, as a sanctifying flame. Zola Baruda. Amen. Amen. We want to pray a very strategic prayer. The Bible said Joshua and the entire camp of Israel could not progress because Lokema among them were the uncircumcised. Ah. Today I want to stand as the chief in this camp. If there be any uncircumcised among us, I give you the right of way. Cut us, cut us, cut us. Let none of our company escape your sword, escape your knife. Brothers, for us to enter the next phase, the knife of God must work among us. You must walk like an angel and begin to pierce me, begin to cut me, begin to take away every infirmity, every inclination to the fallen nature. I stand as a chief in Adulam. I stand as the chief in Adulam and I say, I give you the right of way, cut. I have ferried my company to the to the mountain of the first king. It's now time. It's now time to cut, 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 cut. Let no one that you have given to me escape the knife. Let no, let no, let no. It a brother, it a sister, male or female, old or young. Jesus, let no one escape the knife. Circumcise us. We are the company of the circumcised. My Bible said we are the circumcision. We will worship God in spirit and in truth. And in truth, having no confidence in the flesh. Let no one be uncircumcised. Let us be the company of the circumcised. Cut us, Jesus. Pierce us, Jesus. Take away our addictions. Take away every form of inclination. Take away our confidence in the flesh. Take away every soul. Every soul is attachment. Cut, 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 Maranata leta patai, paras kata la kapra kata, efrata kata, efrata kata kata leta brata la kata leta kamba, sabra tau takai, efaka hila, efaka mina kamina kai la pamba. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Take it away, Take it away. Take it away.
that is manifested in me. Take it away, oh. Anger is not of the Lord. Pride is not of the Lord. Bitterness is not of the Lord. Jealousy is not of the Lord. Hatred is not of the Lord. Ego is not of the Lord. Every form of inclination to the fallen nature circumcised today. Cut me, cut me, cut me, cut me. Some of you have thrown away friends, friends in destiny because you can't accommodate, accommodate them. God did not say you cut them away, you cut them away because you are an empty person. You are an empty person. It's about time to repent. It's about time to repent. What will limit us from entry destiny is not that we don't have a prayer life. It's not that we don't have a fasted life. It's that we are too full of flesh. Too robust. We can't enter destiny like this, my friends. We can't enter like this. La rasa kafagata. Say, let them raise their first key to me and let them say, Cut me, cut me, cut me, cut me, cut me. What is that very character trait that you struggle with? That habit you struggle with? Some of you, you just don't know where to sort up, you don't know where to sort up, you always want to talk back. Don't know when to shut up. You always want to talk. There's fire within you. Always thinking to give response. You have lost great partners in destiny, great friends in destiny. Great doors has been closed to you, and great doors will never have to open because you don't know when to shut up. Ah! If God sent me, ask him. If God sends me, you can ask him whether or not what I say is true. Tonight I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. Show me mess. 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 Amen. Amen. We can sit. We wish we can always continue like this. But we have to close. Saturday passes are. Amen. I don't know what you are doing, but you are doing nonsense, sir. I don't know, but we have to close. But tomorrow morning by eight, we will start prayer. We will start grinding. Say two. 
I know many of you still feel like praying, but we have to close. If we cascade into destiny, if we cascade into the land of promise, there's a junction that is called the eel of the first king. That's where every man we have to get to and take away his baggage, take away every inclination to the flesh. The eel of the first king. That's where every man we have to get to and remove all his clothes. You have to, you come, there, there's no hiding here. There's no, you, you, you come naked. I said, what is that thing? Cut it, cut it, cut it. It's going to be painful, but it's, ah. That's the, that's the ticket into the next phase. You can't enter with this infirmity. We have to close, we have to close, we have to close, we have to close. I pray God shows us mercy and gives us grace to stay under the knife. Because when the knife, st- when the knife begins to cut, there are possibilities of you running away. Breaking through the, th- through the theater room and escaping. I mean, I want to stay under the knife until it is done. Like when Metuloba Agola once said, let my cry not be strong enough to stop you when you are cutting me. Let my tears not be strong enough to stop you when you are taking away the things that I so much love that are against your will. Because when it begins to cut, the, the things, those, those, are, those are the things you love so much. And sometimes if you take tears from your eyes, but let my tears not be strong enough to object you. We have to close. God will help us in Jesus' name. Even me, I don't even know how to close like this. I don't even know how. For then is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. See you tomorrow, 8 a.m.